everyone, and welcome to Drunk Gamers, and also the first uh, video announcement of a game that I personally have been designing, um, Twisted Metal, the board game, a la Twisted Metal Carnage, or Twisted. Um, I have not finalized a title for it yet. Um, I think I'm going for Twisted, though. Um, you can probably tell by the title that it is a car combat game based very strongly on the video games Twisted Metal and also Vigilante 8. Um, now if you're an adult who's played those games, if you're a younger kid you probably haven't, but you know that the games are based around moving around the map and collecting weapon pickups and other pickups and using the weapons that you gather to destroy other vehicles. And this board game that I'm designing is very much the same idea as that. Uh, right now I think I have like 50 or 60 vehicles including profile sheets. Um, let's see how well this shows up. So this is a profile sheet for one of the vehicles. Um, it looks like Warlock or Ice Queen. No, it's Ice Queen. Okay, so as you can see, um, there are three categories for upgrades. Um, I guess I should start by saying that when you play the game, each player will have a, uh, the opportunity to spend a certain amount of points on upgrading their vehicles. And with this game, what I really wanted to focus on was customization and replayability. And so I think I've designed like 80 or 90 upgrade cards. Um, and each one's different. Um, there's, I think, let's see, there's 50, 100, 150, 200, and 300 point categories. And in each of those categories, there's like four or five different cards, um, multiples of each that way. Each player has the opportunity of choosing, you know, the same cards as somebody else and building their car the way that they want. And um, the upgrade cards range from weapons to armor or health bonuses or movement bonuses, that sort of thing. Now, going back to the card profile, this is the vehicle profile. As you can see, there's a little space up here for the life token. Oops, sorry. It's kind of difficult to get this to match up on the screen here, but this little spot here is for a life token. When you start playing the game, each vehicle will start with a glass token in that space, and um, when the vehicle is destroyed, there are respawn locations on the map, and you can basically respawn anywhere you want, but you have to spend a your life token in order to do that. Um, here you've got the vehicle's name, the vehicle's number, there's, like I said, I've got 50 or 60 vehicles, and so I've tried to number each of them so that it's easier when you're choosing, like, you know, a token that you can just look at the number and look at the card and know that, that they're associated with each other. Uh, the vehicle hit points are over here. You've got um, weight class, armor, and uh, movement class, or speed. Um, the speed determines how fast you move, and also when you turbo, how fast you can turbo, um, in addition to some other things when it comes to the rules. Uh, the weight class mainly determines ramming. Um, you get bonuses for ramming based, like say if you're, you're ramming a vehicle who's a different weight class than you, um, or a lower weight class than you. Uh, there are different bonuses for it, and also you can like possibly flip the vehicle you're ramming in addition to other things. Um, the armor is simply, say if your vehicle gets shot with a weapon, um, and the, armor, the weapon does not penetrate armor, um, or have the armor penetrating rule, the armor is basically the amount of damage that you subtract from the weapon's damage that you were just shot with before applying it to your hit points or your HP. Um, and like I said, these three weapon or these three categories. There's a primary weapon, which is like your machine guns, um, rocket launchers, uh, spread shot or shotgun. Um, this is the weapon that's permanently attached to your vehicle, so to speak. Um, the extra slot is you can equip extra armor. If you have like a weaker car, you can spend some points and put some extra armor on it, or maybe some extra health. The uh, you can have a second primary weapon. Um, so you could have a car with like a machine gun and a rocket launcher on it. Um, 
and the gadget is usually something different um, like for example one of the gadgets is a targeting array and what that does is it adds plus one to your we weapon accuracy for all your weapons um, another one is uh, life extension which is like as soon as you drop below fifth, like half of your health um, you can one time per game heal back up to your full health uh, there's a life insurance which is basically it uh, counts as a second life token but it's an expensive card um, so if you have a weaker card that you know is going to get killed you can you know put some points into a life insurance card and that will ensure that you can respawn that weak vehicle um, uh, without spending a life token and I mean all the vehicles are pretty well balanced like I've, I've been designing this game for about a year, maybe a year and a half now, and I have some copyrights on it and stuff. Um, I just wanted to put it out here there to see what you guys think, and um, I've tried, like when I was very, was very first designing the game, I came up with like a point system, and I was like, oh well, you know, every 10 points of damage a special weapon did um, was worth so many points, etc. And that brings me to my next point, which is the special weapon. Each vehicle profile card has a special weapon on it, and uh, they all do something different. Like Ice Queen's Cone of Frost, basically what it does is um, it's a one-use weapon, and I have a template that's like a little triangle, and it's basically, um, it's supposed to be like a projected cone that you extend from the front of your car to see if you can shoot. And um, basically you can use it for this weapon as well. It does 20 damage base uh, without armor piercing, and any vehicles that are hit uh, reduce their next movement by half and cannot turbo in their next turn. Um, so it basically reduces their movement significantly, um, which is good because Ice Queen is a slow, is a big slow car, and so it makes it easier for her to be able to catch up and possibly ram somebody, dealing massive damage and like status effects. Um, for example, Mr. Kill here, I know a creative name, right? His special weapon is Killing Spree. And what that does is it uh, basically does 20 damage without penetrating armor. Um, this one uses an accuracy, and the accuracy system that I'm working with is one that was kind of suggested to me by the first people to play the game. And um, honestly, I play Warhammer, and so when I was very first making this game, the accuracy system I kind of derived from ballistic skill which is uh, you have a base number seven and you subtract the uh, accuracy from seven and that gives you the minimum number you need to hit and they were saying that that was too complex and I needed something simpler and so basically like you probably I don't know if you can see it or not but on the weapon profile um, it's accuracy three minus and what that means is simply that you need to roll a 3 or lower on a d6 in order to hit somebody with the weapon. Um, so it's like a 50% chance to hit. Uh, and what the effects of this car's special weapon are is that when you use this weapon you can roll a 6 sided die and if you manage to roll a 6 on that die all your shots in your next turn you can re-roll to hit. So that's for if you're playing a team battle um, or you're playing multiple cars, which that's something I'm, I'm, I've made it to where you can do is each player, there's various game modes and, um, sorry, I kind of like tongue tied myself there for a second. There's various game modes and each player can play, um, up to like three, two or three cars each, depending on the number of players. And this is a game that's designed for eight players. It's designed to be like an eight player team or free for all game, two teams of four or, uh, uh, three teams of two, um, uh, what was the other one? Oh yeah, four teams of two, um, or just a free-for-all, and anyway, um, if you're playing a team game and you're controlling two cars, each one of your cars can re-roll all their shots if you get this guy's special weapon to proc, I guess, and his special weapon has three uses, it does 20, like I said, it does 20 damage, um, So, um, each player will have the 
each player will start with their um, special weapon fully loaded, and in order to replenish it after those uses are, you know, expended, they will be required to move around the map and obtain a weapon pickup that is a special weapon card and there's various weapons in the game um i'm not going to go into too much detail into each and every single one here but um so here's warlock you can read his profile description hopefully um i'm gonna try to get it up in the in the camera there um there you go uh so let's see next is i've already talked about mr kill but there he is so i mean like i said each car when they start the game they will have the ability to use their special weapon and um you'll basically move around the map collect various uh weapon upgrades or weapon pickups uh there's also utility pickups, which are kind of like, uh, I base them off of, um, like radar jammers and shields that you would gather in, uh, Vigilante 8. Um, if you don't know what that game is, you can look at a video of it and you can see people gathering up those things. And basically, like, they weren't weapons, but they were things that were kind of like perks. Like, a radar jammer basically made it to where homing missiles wouldn't, uh, home in on you, uh, Mortars wouldn't um, track you, your car either, they'd just shoot forward. Um, and shields basically made it to where you couldn't take damage for a certain period of time. And those are both cards that I've created, but of course I have my own rules for them. Um, I think a radar jammer just makes it to where people can't target you for a round of combat, which is like, that's basically everybody takes a turn. Um, and the uh, shield makes it to where you can't take damage for a round of combat, and so again, um, everyone would take a turn, it comes back to your the beginning of your turn, and then you discard it and you can take damage again. Um, so those are the vehicle profiles and the special weapons. Um, when you pick up a weapon pickup, um, there are different spaces on the board, and this is just one board. Uh, I know it doesn't look like much right now, I designed it in Microsoft Paint, but uh, there's green squares, red squares, and purple squares, and it's, they're inside this building, and the building is like the gray area. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have much artistic ability, and so I'm gonna hopefully hire somebody to uh, do professional artwork for this game, but... Um, my point being is you would be able to move around this map, you would be able to move around the map freely, that's one of the key things is you can freely move around the map unlike uh, some of these newer games coming out like X-Wing or uh, Formula D or whatever where it seems more like the movement's restricted by the type of car you, or vehicle you have, um, or sorry not Formula D, um, but uh, what is that game I'm thinking of, um, Wreckage. I've never played Wreckage, but I'm aware of the rules of it, and I've seen it played, and it's like you basically have to draw cars to determine which way you can move, which I think is kind of stupid, honestly, but that's just my opinion. There's people who like that game, and maybe it is a good game, like I've said, I've never played it, it's just that that, that style of rule does not appeal to me. So you will move freely around the board. Um, the objective of the game is to destroy your enemies or the opposing team. Um, I believe I have a game mode where it's objective based and so one team is trying to destroy their a, a board that I've made that has chemical silos on it. And one team's trying to destroy the chemical silos, the other one's trying to protect the chemical silos and kill the leader of the opposing team, which is kind of derived from Vigilante 8 because there were a lot of missions where it was, if you played as the good guys, you had to protect some structure and kill the enemies, and the enemy, if you were a bad guy, you had to destroy some structure and kill the enemies, um, trying to protect it. And so, those are some of the, uh, uh, game ideas I came up with, as well as Last Man Standing, which is basically each player will draw five vehicle cards and You'll play the game and destroy each other, and as vehicles are destroyed, they're removed from the game, 
and the five cards that you picked are kind of like your deck. And so whenever you lose a card, you discard it and you draw another card and place that card in that vehicle in play. Um, I'm also coming up with like, uh, so going back to the map for a second, going back to the map for a second, um, there are four separate maps like this. Two of them are like this. Uh, let's see, there's this one which represents the chemical silos. Uh, the chemical silos are destructible, which I'll talk about later. Um, but it changes the map. Basically, I have overlays that are also gridded, that when the chemical silo is destroyed, you place one of the gridded overlays over the map, and it becomes a uh, hazard. It becomes like an acid pool, and uh, you can drive over it, but if you roll basically a hazard roll, and if you fail to roll, you catch on fire, and um, if you shoot it with a fire weapon, the weapon will spread. So I think that, that was kind of like one of my most innovative ideas, I think, and don't get me wrong, it's probably been done before, but just for this game, um, having come up with everything myself pretty much, I think that's a pretty cool idea. Um, there's also templates for weapons like napalm and things that just stay in play until the end of turn, and like will be, for example, a fire template just, it will just sit here and it will cover up like an area of the map, and if you drive through it, you catch on fire. And they're also grid-based too. Like all the weapon templates are pretty much grid-based because uh, they can be moved through or moved over. Um, and so that's the other map. The third one is this one, which is two buildings that are intended to be like, uh, these are roofs, and so it's like you can move up the ramp and jump across and be on top of this roof here. Um, either one of the roofs. Um, you can't really see it, but it's kind of uh, I uh, got a yellow tint to it, and I color-coded, because like I said, I don't really have that much, uh, I'm not very artistic, and so I kind of color-coded the things to say, oh, well, this is under underground, this is elevated, um, inside the building is blue, it's got a blue tinge to it, and so, um, that map I showed you earlier, uh, yeah, it has a blue tinge to it that you probably couldn't see, um, Another aspect of the game is this map is intended to be an industrial zone, and each of the four map tiles is pretty sizable, as you saw. It's about 16 inches by 20 inches, and uh, they are interchangeable, and again, with the game, I wanted to make it customizable, and so um, the grid is set up so that you can orient the maps in any direction, and they will still... Uh, fit together, and so the intention of that is to be able to make different shapes of maps that uh, you can play and it will increase the playability. There's also bridge tokens that I've made um, that you can connect the maps with if you want to play like an islands match. Um, yeah, so basically the map is entirely customizable. I haven't figured out how many different maps there are that you can possibly play with this game. But I do know that there are a lot. Um, I've played the game several times, or I've watched people play it, and I have yet to see even close to the number of map arrangements being played. So, um, again, the map is customizable, the vehicles are customizable, um, and in a sense, I've, I'm coming up with alternate special cards too for each vehicle that uh, will alter their profile a little bit, like say, it will add speed, take away armor, and add a little bit of health, and then it will completely change the special weapon. And so, coming up with three of those for each vehicle, there's going to be about 150 or so alternate special weapon cards um, that I'd like to put out when the game is finished. Um, I'm self-publishing it, so it's kind of been a slow process, but... Um, I want it to be a large game and one that people will enjoy without making it too expensive. Um, uh, that's my main thing is I kind of want to make it to where people will not look at the price and cringe. Um, but I also want it to be, you know, like I said, extremely customizable, uh, something that they can have a lot of fun with and play repeatedly without thinking about it. And, um, I think I've pretty much got that here. So I was talking previously um, 
about the chemical storage silos and the ability to destroy them. And as you can see, the one in the middle has a uh, purple pickup square there. And I've made tokens, and so for each of these squares, uh, how it's intended to work is that... Sorry. Um is that um, you'll move around and if the vehicle if a vehicle ever passes through a square containing a weapon pickup there'll be a token sitting there it's a square token that looks pretty much like the the square on the board um, what they would do is they pick up the token off the board set it aside and then draw the corresponding card and the uh, pickup would not um, would would remain exhausted meaning there would not be a token placed there until the beginning of the next round of combat before the first player took takes their next turn um and that's intended to make it to where like say if you get on in an elevated area um you can't just sit on a square that has a pickup in it and keep getting this the same kind of pickup over and over again you actually have to move and um it is possible to you know still still uh, take advantage of this but it's a lot harder than it would be otherwise and anyway the the, the chemical storage getting back to that they have a armor value and hit points, 40 hit points, 5 armor. You can target them with your weapons and destroy them. And if you destroy them, what they do is I have this overlay here. You place that over there, and um, now it's like a puddle that becomes a hazard and lines up with the rest of the grid, as you can see. Um, and I have like five, no, four of these. There's four chemical storage silos and four puddle templates. Um, the same goes for the, uh, there's an oil slick template and, uh, napalm template or fire template. Um, they're all gridded, like I said before, so they're all intended to be, like, overlays that you would place over the board and it changes the, uh, it changes the rules of the board. Um. I also have, while I'm talking about it, like landmine tokens and different things. Um, you probably couldn't see that, sorry, but um, I'm all over the place right now. This is kind of the first time I've, uh, I've ever talked about this, and um, I mean publicly. I've, I've talked about it with my friends and stuff a lot, and we played it, like I said, and they've all liked it. Um, but I'm just trying to touch base on a little bit of everything right now. Um, I might come back later with like a formal presentation of it and uh, and uh, take that route, but I just kind of wanted to make it known that I've been working on this for a year and a half. Um, and so, in addition to my normal job, I'm an educator. Um, that's what my real job is, and this is kind of like what my side hobby has been right now, and I'm hoping to make it a, a second job. So. Um, this game will be coming to Kickstarter eventually. Um, I thought about taking it to the bank and asking for a loan to get it started, um, to kind of like uh, expedite the process of publishing, because like I said, it has been a, a very slow, um, tedious, uh, it's basically just when I've had the extra money to uh, swing towards it that I've been able to make different things or or fill out the legal documents and stuff for it um and so I'm hoping that if I can get it up on Kickstarter or something like that then I can you know procure more funds to speed it along because I think it's something that a lot of people will enjoy um thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for more I will I will be posting a more formal um like presentation with like some slideshows of all the vehicle profiles and stuff like that. I do have, uh, I created the vehicle profiles in um, X or not Excel, but uh, PowerPoint. And so um, I originally drew all my concepts by hand and I went into uh, Microsoft Paint and PowerPoint and like finalized it kind of the designs that I want anyway. Um, what I really like to get is an artist to hand draw um, the vehicle tokens and like the pickup cards and everything. I like it all to be hand drawn or, or maybe computer generated, make it look something like uh, um, zombies or uh, what's that other game? I have a couple of games up here. Um, 
the scent. I think it would be cool if it looked like this scent, or even a uh, Cosmic Encounter, which is another game I have. And that's kind of what I ba I kind of took that idea to base the uh, special weapons was the the specials for Cosmic Encounter. The only difference is that um, you're gonna have to move around around the rep map and collect them. Uh, so. I guess that's it, and you guys have a great evening.